record. Good morning. Well, that was certainly a peppy song to make certain we're all awake for Sunday school this morning. I hope you're doing well. Before we begin, let's talk to God this morning. He's always awake, no matter when we want to talk to him. Heavenly Father, thank you for creating the Sabbath. Thank you for bringing us together on the Sabbath. Please clear our minds of distractions and open our hearts to the words that you've given us through the Bible. In thy name we pray. Amen. So, I am here with you today and sitting at my dining room table since we're going to be talking about a feast. And you might wonder what all these things on the dining room table have to do with our Sunday school lesson. So let's see, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 11, 12 baskets. We have got two fish, one, two, three, four, five loaves of bread. We have a shepherd and a sheep. We have pipe cleaners, pipe cleaners. Uh, we have a brown paper bag. We have a jar of peanut butter and we have markers. Now, how do all of those go together for a Sunday school lesson? That's just what we're going to find out. Stop and think a minute if you can figure out how it all goes together. I suppose you can figure out the two fish and the five loaves of bread. So we'll start with that. When someone mentions a feast, what comes to mind? What comes to my mind is an even larger dining room table and lots of different food. If I asked you to bring two things to a feast, what would you like to bring? I suppose some of the answers might be pizza, uh, hot dogs, hamburgers, potato chips, ice cream. I uh, don't suppose anyone would say broccoli or spinach, but they might. But our feast today serves over 5,000 people. There are 5,000 men and then there are women and then there are children, and they only have two things to eat, fish and bread. That might not be appetizing for some people, but then again, for others, it might. We're going to talk about the big picture question for our unit. Why did Jesus perform miracles? Jesus performed miracles to glorify God, to show he is the son of God, and to care for people. You will be able to remember those three reasons. You might even already remember them from last Sunday. And talking about last Sunday, there was a miracle. Jesus calmed the sea with two words, be still. Can you imagine being out in a boat in bumpy water, the waves crashing over the side, the wind howling so loud you can't hear somebody talk, and somebody says, be still, and the water is still, and the wind stops blowing. No, I can't imagine that either. So I used the word miracle, and most of us know what the word miracle means, but maybe everyone doesn't know what the word miracle is. A miracle is something amazing done with God's power that would normally be impossible. Like Jesus saying to the water, be still. Man could not do that, but Jesus and God can do that. 
So we're going to talk about our story today. Um, if you will remember, the Bible is full of 66 different books, and they are divided into the New Testament and the Old Testament. The Old Testament being the stories before Jesus was born, the New Testament being the story starting with Jesus' birth, going through his life, his crucifixion, his resurrection, and then what happened in the church after that. Our story today is so special, and I want to tell you why it's special. If you will remember, the New Testament starts off with the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Say those with me. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They are the stories or the good news of Jesus' life told by four different men. Um, some of them have the same stories, some different stories, some use the same words, some use different words, but all four books are true. They are given the words, the writers are given the words by God. They're all true. Today's Bible story is the only miracle of Jesus that is in all four books. It is um, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I have chosen to read it to you out of Mark 6. It starts with verse 30. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. By this time, it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said, and it's already very late. Send the people away so they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered, you give them something to eat. They said to him, that would take eight months of a man's wage. Are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? How many loaves do you have? He asked. Go and see. When they found out, they said, five and two fish. Then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to set before the people. He also divided the fit two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish. The number of the men who had eaten were 5,000. So, let's think about this story from two different sides. Um, think about the disciples, how they were looking that afternoon, and think about Jesus and how he was looking at that afternoon. So they told us that the disciples had been working hard. Uh, they had, um, had been telling people about Jesus and his love, and they're excited about it, but they're also exhausted, and they go to Jesus, and they say this to him, and Jesus said, now just calm down. Take it easy, we're gonna go and have some rest. So they get in the boat, cr 
crossing the sea, thinking they're going to a hillside to rest and be alone with Jesus and catch up. And before they even get to the other side in their boat, people have crowded the entire hillside because they recognized the disciples and Jesus and they wanted to hear more. The disciples were very frustrated, but was Jesus? Jesus was not. Remember it said Jesus looked on with them, the people on the hillside with compassion. He cared about them, he loved them. He said they were like sheep without a shepherd. So what is this about sheep without a shepherd? One of the names for Jesus is the good shepherd. He calls himself that. In John chapter 10, verse 14, he says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Well, what's another name for Jesus that's in our Bible story? We talked about bread. Jesus in um, John chapter six, verse 35 says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. So just like um, I might be called Miss Pam by you, I might be called Mrs. McKinney by someone else. My husband might call me Pam. My grandchildren might call me Mimi. My daughters might call me Mom. Jesus has lots of different names too that describes who he is. And we're going to learn some of those names in our miracle stories. We've learned that Jesus is the Good Shepherd and Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is also our savior. Jesus provided for the physical needs of the people that day. He gave them food for their bodies, but he also taught them that he could provide for all of their spiritual needs. He forgives us when we ask for forgiveness. He saves us when we tell him that we believe in him. And he promises us eternal life with God the Father and Him in heaven. So, um, when we look at this story, we also think about the disciples thinking, oh my goodness, we don't have enough money to feed 5,000 people. And rather than just Jesus saying, oh, don't worry about it, I'm gonna perform a miracle, nothing to worry about, everybody will have food, Jesus taught his disciples how to solve the problem. I'm sure you do a lot of problem solving in school. But Jesus said, first of all, let's find out if there is any food around us. And they did find the five loaves and the um, two fish. So if you want to remember that, Jesus being the bread of life, we remember, uh, we also one time talked about Jesus telling his disciples they could be fishers of men. So that brings me to the pipe cleaner. If you have a pipe cleaner at home, you can take it and fold it in half, pinch the end where you fold it in half, then open it up a little bit, go down towards the end of the pipe cleaner, and twist the two ends together and you have a fish. This was also the symbol that the early Christians used to let other people know they were believers of Jesus. So it's a very special symbol in our, um, from our Bible times. Um, so Jesus sent them out to look for the food. Then he said, okay, that's step one. Step two, let's everybody sit in groups. You disciples go have people sit in groups of 50 and 100, and then let's pass out the food that we have here. And just like I might take a loaf of this bread 
and start passing it out to you. I might pinch off a piece um, and give it to Ben or pass a piece and give it to Ellis or pass a piece and give it to Coral or Caleb and I'm just pinching away at this piece of bread, giving it to different people in our Sunday school class, and eventually, guess what? That bread's going to be all gone. Everybody's gonna have a piece, and there's not gonna be any left in my hand. But that's not what happened that day with Jesus and his disciples. Jesus performed the miracle that fed over 5,000 people and they even had leftovers enough to fill 12 baskets. That reminds us that just like Jesus had enough food for everybody, Jesus has enough love for everybody. No matter how much love he gives me, how much love he gives you, how we share the story of his love with other people, there's always more. He doesn't run out. So we talk about um, the food, the bread, that would eventually uh, run out if I gave it um, to people. And that brings us to the question that we're going to uh, listen to for the answer from Pastor Brian. In just a minute, we're going to stop our lesson and switch over to the video with Pastor Brian because he answers a question today that I would have asked him. And I bet there's some, old, some adults watching the lesson today that would are going to want to know the answer to this question as well. So let's stop for a minute and listen to Pastor Brian.